Thank you very much. Um, I guess now it's my job to do my, my part. And what I want to talk to about today is two things. One is obviously access to financing, because I represent a financial institution. And second thing is modernization and technologies in the sector. On the access to finance, the story is still pretty gloomy. You heard from banks. You, you know that the interest rates in Ukraine are at the level of 20 to 24 in Grivna terms. So totally not possible. Um, and even if, as Mr. Savchenko suggested, all the IFIs collectively give money to Ukrainian banks to own land to smaller and medium-sized Ukrainian farmers, this is not going to do the trick. Because banks have learned the hard way, you heard the stories about the judicial system, that it is very difficult to secure your loan with uh, inventory or with, with goods, okay, with crops. Because one day, as a bank, you come to a silo and you find that there is no rain. At the same time, smaller farmers do not have enough security because land cannot be used as collateral. So from that perspective, uh, we are big supporters of the land reform and allowing for land to be tradable because then farmers could use it as collateral. The question is when to do it and how to do it and to get all the institutions right. So I think it's going to be fairly challenging for banks to finance the sector. Uh, for larger, stronger corporates, like the ones sitting here, it's available. You can get financing from banks, although they're cutting down on, their loan, on, their, on the limits. We are available. The IFIs, the three of us, IFC, BRD, EIB, you heard from my colleague. There is some bilateral funding available as well from the likes of FMO and others. But it is only available for the larger and the stronger and, and the most efficient companies. So the challenge is really how do you tackle the SMEs? And what IFC is doing is we're putting together partnerships because we realize that we cannot do it direct. Us and the, and the bank is not enough in the current environment. So we are partnering with input suppliers and off-takers, and we're structuring partial credit guarantee arrangements. That involves an input supplier, a company called Bayer, a good case in point, two banks, Raiffeisen Bank of Al and Credit Agricole, that have experience in this sector and know this sector, and IFC as a AAA rated international financial institution. The program started two years ago. It was very difficult at first because the instrument that was being utilized, the promissory note, was a very foreign institute for local bookkeepers. So we added an, an advisory component to that program that was aimed at training the auditors, uh, the, the bookkeepers in uh, smaller and medium-sized farms. And the, the program is now growing 30% per year. We started with 50 million grivnas in the first year. We've now reached 400 million grivna volume of financing uh, to, to the farmers through that program alone. Second instrument we're working on is crop receipts. This is something that was very uh, popular in Brazil. We contributed to and helped the government to put together the legislation. We're now working on setting up a registry for the crop receipts. And we're also training um, notaries how to deal with the instrument. We're working in four pilot oblasts of Ukraine, and the total number of crop receipts that were issued is now more than 40. And we're still waiting for the mo moment of truth when the farmer defaults on the crop receipt, because this is going to be the real test, whether the instrument 
addresses the issue which it is supposed to address, the weak judicial system. So on, on the one hand, I don't want the farmer to default, but on the other hand, as a test, we're, we're waiting for this to happen. As we speak, we're having a delegation in Brazil, uh, which consists of business people, government, uh, members of the central bank. We'd like to, to, to understand more deeper and in more details what really worked in Brazil, what, what were the, so that we could fine tune the program. Now, modernization is another, is a more positive aspect. Because in the modernization, actually, some of the Ukrainian agro holdings are probably one of the most modern globally. In fact, my agricultural experts from IFC that have global expertise are telling me that from an operational efficiency standpoint, our Ukrainian clients really stick out and we should be sending our clients from other parts of the world to Ukraine to get their knowledge and understanding when it comes to precision farming and, and other technologies. Now, for, again, for smaller and medium-sized, it's a bit challenging. So what we are doing is we're again partnering. We're partnering with uh, management consulting firms. We're partnering with input suppliers, equipment suppliers, and we are disseminating this knowledge collectively to the SMEs. And this work is supported by uh, funding from the donors of, uh, of governments of Austria, Belgium, and Canada. Where we see the future and where we see the need for financing, there's a need for working capital financing, definitely. There's a need for financing in agricultural logistics because for, the, for Ukrainian uh, agriculture to fully realize its potential, we're going to have a bottleneck with agri-logistics, so there is potential there. And there is a future for new technologies, modern technologies, uh, at the crossroads of agriculture and IT, because IT is also a fairly developed sector in Ukraine. So I think there's going to be more solutions, and if we manage to, 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 to get the synergy out, I think that we will all uh, uh, benefit from, from, from these new technologies that emerge.